anthropology can no longer claim to have a particular monopoly on ethnography. For ethnography to move forward from its past, we also need to look for a way to bring that past into the present. No longer are we in a world where films are made about people, they're made by people for themselves. About whom these films are being made, communities about whom these films are being made, as co-equal collaborators, it leaves us with more to gain, however awkward it might be. Ethnography expands with the, the complexities of contemporary social cultural living. One of the most interesting work, I think, in the history of ethnographic film is these moments where technology shifted so radically and it had a very profound impact on the aesthetic of the work. African Art, African Voices was an exhibition that was held at the Philadelphia Art Museum. It had come here from the Seattle Art Museum. It was a touring exhibit that tried to use multiple voices to tell the stories of African objects. The show was based on a, a good theory that it's good to have many people explaining the lives of objects. And yet the show failed for a number of reasons, I believe. And one of the reasons is that each set of materials only in the end explained by one person. And that that person was still explaining, speaking at us, telling us what these objects were, but we weren't engaging in any kind of conversation. And I asked the curator what was going on, you know, there's a potential for a conversation, a potential for uh, an exchange, and it wasn't happening. And the curator said, well, you know, we have the illusion down here of exchange, but in the end, everything has to get decided upstairs in the director's office. And really, these relationships you're, that, the peop that we've established are not of the people to the object, but it's the person talking to the director who's collecting the interview and then putting them in an order. So we have the illusion of many voices, but we actually have one structure. And it occurred to me that something in film uh, has the same problem. We collect interviews, we gather people and record what they say, and then we put them in a line in the linear sequence of a film. And by doing that, we inevitably put a single order and we cut out the chance for exchange. And there's something else that happens when you have a group of people in a space. It could be in this conference room. It could be with all of you. That is fluid. That can go in any direction. And that the reality that's created from that changes with each coming together of the people or each coming together of the materials. And so one of the things I look to is a film practice that maintains that vitality, that maintains that fluidity, that speaks to life not as a structured linear event, but proses the problem of reality as something that lacks that structure, that is spontaneous and fluid. The question I think before us is how ethnography can give us these tools to pose the problems of reality. What is it we see? What is it we experience? And how out of these experiences do we construct ourselves as being part of one group or another? And I think for ethnography to move forward from its past, we also need to look for a way to bring that past into the present in some way that's dynamic. It could be through the re-showings themselves and the discussions those generate, but it may also be through other forms of re-edits, of remediation, of you taking old works and remaking them into something new based on what you see now and what you're told about then. Anthropology can no longer claim to have a particular monopoly on ethnography, perhaps. Um, so ethnographic film is now situated within a much larger spectrum of cognate, culturally inflected uh, media practices. This is not actually nothing new. You think of Cavalcanti in the 30s, people like uh, Victor Masayezva of Trin Minh Ha, of Tracy Moffat, um, of Kidlat Tahimik, a Filipino filmmaker, and many, many others, is inflected by anthropology and in dialogue, often very oppositionally, with anthropology. The most interesting work of this kind is not really inflected by an ethnographic sensibility, which is very different from saying that it's in dialogue with or informed by anthropology in a sense. It doesn't really display an ethnographic sensibility. It doesn't have the same investment in ethnography.